What's up? Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button and hit that bell because I'm going to be doing more Garage Builder content as well as Dreams PS4 content. I am a creation channel, so if you enjoy creating, whether that be whatever that is, I just enjoy art and all this great creation stuff. So what are we going to be learning how to do? We're going to be learning how to do advanced animations really, really easily in Garage Builder. It's real easy and I look for the easiest ways to do things. So check through my tutorials on my channel that will pair up here for Garage Builder. Let's begin. Pull out sticks, put left and right into the knots import. From the out port, put this into the reset of a counter. From the raise of the counter, put that into the left and sticks import. Left, right, sticks, import. The out port of this counter needs to go into a digitize. You can kind of see how it looks framey, like the numbers look like it could be like, you know, used for frames. That's what it's actually doing. You see the counter, it has settings. Put this on loop. And then if you only have two frames, it'd be eight. If you had three frames, you want to make this 12. And you just keep going up by four until you're um, finished with your frames of animation. Then you just want to copy my settings. So you can probably see that this is probably what this is supposed to be used for. It's very useful, especially for animations. You can use this for a whole bunch of other stuff. Combined with the digitize, you can get a even value. It d probably doesn't matter, but I like seeing exactly the number that's actually the frame is on. Make sure this is on two. You can mess around with that for other things though. Next, pull out comparisons for how many frames are actually going to be in your animation. One of those frames will be an idle animation. The idle animation needs to have an equal to sign. If this bottom number is equal to zero, it's going to send a signal to your idle animation to turn on. You can see by the lines how this looks very animating, like I'm stepping from frame to frame. The reason why this resets back to zero is because of that not gate that I showed you in the beginning of the video that we started with. That's resetting the counter back to zero. From here, we are still on this comparison right here. If this comparison is greater than four, because we have a constant where we can actually put the exact value we want into the bottom part of this comparison, we're using a greater than sign for this comparison. So if it's greater than four, then it'll send a signal to our next frame to turn on whatever frame that may be, whether that be Mario or whatever you want it to be. And since whenever we're not moving the sticks, the not gate resets everything back to zero, that's what'll put us back in our idle animation at any time we're not moving. Now we have to figure out a way to get a third animation so that way we can keep pro keep on doing this process over and over again until we're done animating. It's very simple to actually do that. What you do in this case is pull out another constant and rate go up by four, like I said in the beginning of the video. Put the out port into the top import of a new comparison. And pull out this digitize and put this at the bottom of that comparison. Make sure I don't have these uh, lines mixed up real quick. Digitize for this one's at the top part. So yeah, I do have them mixed up. So switch that around. And you should be solid. Next, what you want to do is make your new animation. Pull out a person, if I didn't say this process already. Pull out a game screen, connect this to the person, is blue. And then connect your animations to the person's blue port. 
I know you guys probably can't see it, but it's just that blue dot right there. That's where well, that's what I've been, you know, saying right now. That's where all the animation should go. So here is our third animation. Just so I can see if this animation is actually working, I'm going to clear it. So that way, when we're walking and we reach that animation, everything should turn blank if it's actually working. If it doesn't turn blank, I'm going to try one more thing. And if this doesn't work, that just means we got to add one extra step that I know what to do. But I'm going to pause the video and then bring it to there whenever, um, when it, once we get there, you know, once I program the logic in or the programming, you know. All right, let me do this real quick. That didn't take too long. All you need to do is add an and and delete whatever was inside of the make visible for the second frame. Instead, use an and, put the ands out port into the visible of your second animation frame and put the comparison that was supposed to go into his visible into the top part of the and. Then pull out a knot, and for your third animations comparison, put this into the knot's import and the out port of the knot into the and's second port. And if you were to have four animations or more, you'd have to do this and step for every extra animation that you add. And that's easily it. This is easily how you do animation. So this would be the way that I would do it. I hope this helps you guys out. And um, I hope this is uh, an easy explanation, an easy way that saves you guys uh, data or, or keeping organized and whatnot whenever you're actually creating and whatnot. So I hope I helped you guys out with this one. There's a lot you can use this for. Um, so... I'm going to actually start making those tutorials the where you can use this for other things soon, probably by tomorrow. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this helped. So like what it's saying is, um, you know, usually after three hits, you'll fall down no matter what. Um, but if you're blocking, then you won't faint. So like that's the uh, trick and you can dodge out of it.